In this lecture, let's go ahead and learn how to make this particular click button functional. So whenever we click this particular button, an event happens and we already know this from JavaScript that whenever we need to handle a button click, we need to use a event handler. So the concept of event handling in React is a little bit different. So this lecture isn't about event handling exactly. This is more concerned with the state. So you could ignore the event handling code here. I will actually go through that code in a brief, but remember that we will be learning event handling in React in much more detail in the lectures to come. So for now, just bear with me and try to understand what we are doing here. So as we want to add an event handler to this particular button, I would say on click and as you can see on click over here is not the regular event handler which comes with JavaScript because that on click does not have C in capitals. Instead, this on click which we are using here is a JSX attribute. And to this particular on click, we are actually going to go ahead and pass in a method called as increment. So right now I'll say on click equals and I'll make use of curly brackets here so that we could pass in the increment method over here. So now let's actually go ahead and call this increment method inside there. Now one tricky thing about this particular event handling in React is that you actually have to make use of a arrow function here just like that and then you need to call in the method which you want to call. So I want to call in the increment method so in order to get access to that method, I would say this dot increment and simply make a call to it. So you could ignore this part as of now because I have not explained this part right now. But when we jump into event handling, obviously we are going to learn the different ways of calling a method or calling a function while handling an event. So for now, just ignore that. So now just let's focus on creating this particular increment method. So in order to create that method, I would go right below the constructor and in here I would say increment. And the job of this increment method is to go ahead and increment the value of counter here. So in order to increment the value of counter, the very first thing which we need to do is that we need to actually access the state because we cannot directly access the value of counter as the counter value is present in state. So now I could simply go ahead and say something like this dot state and let's try to access the value of counter as well. So I would say this dot state dot counter equals uh, let's try to set the value to one at first and let's see if that would work. So if I save this code, if I go back here and if I click this, nothing happens. And if I click on inspect, if I go to the console, if I hit refresh, click here, nothing usually happens and we don't even get an error. And this is because this is not the way in which you set the value of a state. So whenever you want to set a value of a state, you have to use something which is called as the set state method. So remember that whenever you want to change the value of state, you cannot change the state value directly. Instead, you have to do it by using the set state method. So now in order to access the set state method, I have to say this dot set state and then to this particular method, I need to pass in the actual new value of state which I want to set. So currently the state value is nothing but this object right here. So I also need to pass in an object here and the value for that new object is going to be counter and the counter value has to be incremented by one. So in order to increment the counter value by one, first of all, I need to get access to that value. So in order to access that specific value, I need to say this dot state dot counter. So this gives me the current value of the counter and then I need to increment that value by one. So if I save this, we are good to go. Now, if I go back here, hit refresh, if I click this, as you can see, the count value would be increased. If I keep on clicking, the count value would be increased up over here. So this is how the state of a particular component can be changed. So unlike props, the value of state can be changed and the change in value is reflected up over here. So the only thing which you need to understand with respect to state is that state is an object 
and you need to initialize the state object inside the constructor. Also, you cannot directly change the value of that state using the this dot state. Instead, you have to use a method which is called as the set state method. So as an exercise, what you could do is that you could name this particular button as increment. And what you could do is that you could create a decrement button, add a decrement button, add a method called as decrement and try to decrement the value of that counter right up over here. So you could perform that as an exercise and let me know if you're able to do that. So you could refer to the code, simply make some modifications, simply copy this particular button, replace increment with decrement and create a decrement function which decrements the counter value by one. So that's it for this lecture. Hopefully you guys were able to understand how to use state inside a class based component. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.